Hey everyone, so in today's tutorial I want to show you how you can bend metal with Typeflow. So first I just have this box animated to go down and then up again. So that's going to be our collider object and then I just have this metal barrier. So before you do anything else just right click on your object and you can use any object that you would like for this as always. Just click clone and I'll rename this just barrier 02 and say okay we're gonna need this later so I'll just select barrier 02 height selection and I only have barrier 01 and this is what we're gonna work with so next as always let's just create a tie flow birth objects pick the barrier height selection so next we actually need to fracture this so I'm just gonna add a Voronoi fracture operator so just hit tab type Voronoi fracture and I'll give it 300 fragments Next, we need to scale these down. So I'll just do scale operator. For now, we're gonna set this to 60%. So the idea behind this is that we need gaps between the fragments so that as the metal is sort of pushed down, um, there's room for the metal to, to bend. If there are no gaps, then all of the pieces will just collide with each other and the bending will not properly work. So then we need to turn this into a physics shape. So now, of course, it'll just fall down but like a bunch of pieces, but we need to bind them together. So I'll just do a physics bind operator. Let's set the type to rigid joint. And now we basically need to increase the strength of the binds by a lot so that the binds between these fragments are strong enough to keep them together even under the pressure of this box, sort of squishing it down and retain its shape like this. So for my example, I just set this to 50,000 and I'll do the same thing for the damping and for the spring here and for the damping for the spring as well. Now under bind breaking, you want to enable the deforming option and set the bend angle to maybe 40. So this will allow the binds to bend at an angle under the pressure of this collider box. And I'll just increase the maximum number of binds to 10 from 3. Because again, we need a lot of binds to keep these fragments together so that nothing sort of pops out and just flies away under this pressure of the box, right? We're trying to keep this sort of uniform shape of the object after it's squished. So next we just need to add the collision with this box. So I'll just do physics collision, pick this box here. And if I move forward, it should be working pretty well at this point. And I can tell that it is. Now, as you can see in my example here, it's sort of sliding on the ground a little bit. Now we can reduce that by increasing the static friction. So if I go back under physics shape, dynamics, increase the static friction all the way to one. So this is the amount of energy that is lost when a particle hits the ground. Dynamic friction, on the other hand, is the amount of energy that is lost when a particle hits another particle. So I'll just leave dynamic at 0.5 and increase static to one. This should make the barrier stick to the ground more instead of sort of sliding like this. Now, if you recall, this is our barrier 001. So I'll just disable the display of this and go unhide by name and enable my barrier 02, which is an exact copy. And I want to add the tie particle skin modifier. And here you can just click on none and select your current tie flow. As you can see, it will basically bend this copy of the barrier based on what's happening in the tie flow simulation. So it's taking the geometry and creating this second skin basically based on the fragments in the tie flow sim. So this is exactly what we wanted is this sort of metal bending effect. And as you can see, it's sticking to the ground much more. This bottom leg is not sliding anymore due to the increased static friction. So that's perfect. Everything is working beautifully. Now I just want to smooth this out a bit more. So I'm going to add the relax modifier on top of this. And you can increase the relax value to one. So if I zoom in closer, turn this on and off, you can see what it does. It just sort of reduces some of those sharp edges. And on top of it, I want to add another turbo smooth just to smooth it out even more. So you can see what kind of difference that makes. So at this point, I'll just do shift V to create a type preview. And I have a separate tutorial on how to use type preview. You can look that up if you don't know. I'll just hit create preview. So here's the final preview of the metal bending effect. Super cool. 
pretty easy to set up. Now definitely play around and replace this with other objects. So I made a few more examples. So I worked on another example of a bullet being destroyed basically. So if you guys are a fan of the movie Wanted, you can recreate that effect where the bullets hit each other mid-air and the metal deforms or they hit a wall at high speed. So that's pretty fun to explore. I did another example where I just have this beverage can being squished down. So that's just an idea for you for what you can do. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. If you did, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. And I'm going to include this project file in the Typeflow project file mega pack, which you can download at redefinefx.com slash free. So it's going to be 20 plus Typeflow scenes that I've created that you can download and learn from. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.